This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. This is episode 478. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. Up on this episode we are reviewing the brand new instalment to the Conjuring universe. We're going to be looking at The Nun 2 which was released by Warner Brothers last Friday September 8th. So it's now out there for people to check out. I was going to say the long awaited. Um, It has been six years I think six, five, six years since the previous one made its way to the cinema, which does feel like a bit of a long time, but when you take into account COVID and all the rest that happened in between, the movie, the original anyway, was pretty financially successful, so it has taken a bit of time to get to here, but we have it nonetheless. Now, I saw the first movie in America, actually. I was over visiting a friend over in Virginia. I went to one of those fancy Alamo draft houses, watched it, and was fairly underwhelmed. But that should surprise no one. I'm not the biggest fan of the Conjuring universe. I seem to like the ones that everyone else hates. Kind of the same with the Insidious movies. I kind of like the ones that everyone else hates. So I don't know what that says about me. Probably poor taste. I'll leave that to your judgment dear listener but we're going to be doing a review of that movie after the first break we're of course going to play that trailer but i just want to stress that podcast under the stairs is a spoiler podcast we uh, spoil movies on the regs i don't go forensically into detail about what happens but i will talk about scenes that i liked disliked using context from the film itself so if you've not seen the movie yet it's only been out a few days then you might want to stop here and return to the review after you've watched it If you just don't give a shit, then hang around. Uh, No one will judge you for it at all. And if you've seen the movie, obviously you're in the right place to weigh in with what you found the movie to be like in your viewing experience. So, with all that out of the way, that introduction done, we're going to take a short break while you watch the trailer. And when you return and I am here, we'll discuss the movie, give it a grade and uh, mosey on out here. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is the teaser trailer for The Nun 2. There has been an incident. Killings across Europe. You are the only person who has dealt with something like this. What we're going after. (laughs) It's unlike anything you've ever seen. Chapter 2, Rated R, only in theatres Friday. And welcome back. So you have just heard that trailer for The Nun 2. Um, let's give you some information about this one. Directed by Michael Chavez. Uh, he himself has now got a bit of a history with doing these sorts of movies. He made his way onto the scene doing The Curse of Yellowrona. Uh, he then did The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. A movie that I enjoyed that, I just want to stress, Found enjoyment and entertainment from. It's not a good movie. And now this is him back doing his third in the Conjuring universe. This being The Nun 2. It stars some familiar faces from the previous one. So we have uh, Jonas Bluket back and Tasia Firminga. Um, she is sister of Vera Firminga who is obviously Lorraine Warren in the, the, the Conjuring movies. Uh, we also have Storm Reid, uh, Anna Popwell... Uh, Caitlin Rose, Downey and Bonnie Irons, who's returning as the titular nun. The synopsis, as I've written down on this bit of paper here to keep me right. 1956 France. A priest is murdered. An evil is spreading. The sequel to the worldwide smash follows Sister Irene as 
she once again comes face to face with Valak, the demon nun. So yeah, I mentioned in the upfront, I saw the nun when it came out, I saw it in the States. Saw so one of those fancy Alamo draft houses, which I would recommend you go to because those cinemas absolutely kick ass. Put our cinemas in the UK to shame just a smidge. Um, but I was wholly underwhelmed by the movie, if I'm honest. It did kind of feel like what you get when you have a kind of tertiary event or character in a movie and you decide to spin it off. Now this has kind of been the formula now for a little while in the, the Conjuring universe as they're calling it. You have those Conjuring movies, we've had the Annabelle movies, we've had the Curse of Ilorona, um, and now we're on to the Nun movies. I think there's still talk of the Crooked Man getting a spin-off, that was from the Conjuring too. And there's a certain point where you kind of feel to yourself, maybe enough is enough. Maybe we should put the brakes on. But... The bottom line is these movies make a ton of money. The Conjuring, and unless I'm wrong about this, this fact was there after the third one, is the highest grossing franchise uh, in all the history of horror. And that's three movies in. That's not including all the spin-offs and all the rest. So when you have that bankable commodity where you've got people out with the general cinema goers that would go and see a horror movie, going to check those movies out, and then being kind of... So I say sucker. Sucker's a terrible word, actually. Being inspired to go away and check some of the spin-off stuff, then, you know, these studios will continue doing these movies because these movies keep making money. And you can't blame them for that. It is literally the purpose of making movies. We all want to think it's for fine arts purposes, but if they don't make any money, studios go bankrupt. And, uh, yeah, that's the end of cinema. So... That's the that, that's the, the, the pitch stall for this one. This is a needless sequel to a needless movie. Now, my thoughts on this one are kind of similar in some respects to the original Nun movie and that it has an interesting nugget of a concept at its core but essentially it doesn't really know what to do with it so it reuses the same ideas and jump scares over and over again to the point of exhaustion to the point that when you get to the end of this movie you're kind of over it um they also have relatively long run times for what feels like spin-off franchise movies which typically would be about an hour and a half hour and 35 minutes this is close to an hour and 50 including the credits which is pretty long and it does kind of feel like one of my pet peeves in horror movies is Born rot on this one. I went to see that um, Insidious 5 movie recently, and one of my biggest gripes with it, one of the reasons I came out so angry, and angry is the word I would use on the movie, is we spent an hour and 40 minutes to end up exactly where we were at the end of the fourth movie. Like if you if you take the events in the fifth movie and put them out there, you you actually end up exactly where you were at the end of the fourth movie except some events have happened that have changed nothing. Um, so it's a needless sequel. No one was like desperately clambering out for that story. And as a result, it did the bare minimum to scrape by. The Nun 2 is kind of the same. If you look at it from a conceptual point of view, there is a entity found in the second Conjuring movie, which is The Nun, right? It's a scary thing. It haunts Lorraine Warren. The first Nun movie sets up the origin of that. You know, this uh, demon that manages to break loose from hell, takes on the form of a nun, um, and like desperately drives a convent insane to the point that they all kill themselves, murder each other, etc, etc. Sister Irene's called in, um, and she appears to have a, like a gift, a sight, and she uses this gift, uh, along with a guy called Frenchie, who has... Easily the worst French accent since a low, a low or a Clouseau movie um, to to exorcise the demon. Except at the end of that movie, the demon manages to piggyback with Frenchie, aka Maurice, um, away from this movie. Now you then have that as a well, that's how the demon gets to America. That's how Lorraine sees him. Fine. So we then get all this information in the middle here, which is just padding out. So we're a couple of years removed from the events of the first movie. And ultimately, 
that the nun is kind of traveling across Europe, uh, just causing all manner of mischief, you know, making priests levitate and set themselves on fire. Um, there's, you know, other deaths by people. And ultimately, we find that the Valak is looking for something. And our sister Irene, who is desperately trying to stay on the straight and narrow, who's once again called in by His Holiness and the Cardinals to go once more into the breach, dear friends, and take on Valak. This time, uh, Irene is joined by a cynical American nun um, whose, whose belief in the sacrament is, is strained. I wonder if this is going to play out in some way at the very end when we depose Valak. Yes, yes, you guessed it. This is uh, this is Chekhov's cynical nun. Um, the problem, the problem with the nun too, is it really does painfully follow beat on beat checkbook of checkbox on what you expect the movie to do without really doing anything that you don't expect it to do and as a result of that it kind of lacks any substantial impact characters that are killed off you don't really know them they're two-dimensional characters and when we do try and fill them out with any information at all it's not really worth anything um there is some great like imagery in this movie and i'm going to come back to that because those are the bits that elevate it for me but when we actually find out what valak's kind of modus operandi in this movie is it's kind of fucking dumb and there's no real explanation as to what the benefit of of retrieving this sacred relic is out with it will grant them passage back to heaven which it kind of feels like valak's doing everything in its power not to go back to heaven so it's kind of almost like it's a juxtaposition that doesn't sit well with me. Like the actions don't merit the 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 desired outcome. Um, flinging to that, we are spending a lot of time with Frenchie, um, aka Maurice, who I don't find a, as a particular likable character. I find him like pretty weird, and the fact that people are humouring him at an old girls' school is kind of weird and slightly creepy. I know it was a different time, but come on. Um, he is all too often seen doing things that would raise a suspicious eyebrow, but people kind of pass it off. And ultimately, he is—he's a husk. He's a—you he, know—he has a symbiotic, parasitic demon traveling with him, and that's you know that's Valak essentially who manages to overtake the body and control the body whenever it wants. Is never truly stressed how Valak's power works but it appears that Valak can do more than one thing at once so can be in one place manifesting something else whilst at the same time fighting an unholy battle against nuns. We get a kind of Irene and the, the the American sister on the on the on the the trail and their investigations trying to hunt down Valak take about an hour and 15 minutes of this movie. It's really only the last 25 minutes that they actually show up to quote-unquote save the day. Um, and that in itself is kind of bothersome because the the journey that they do to investigate involves a tiny little bit of investigation, a couple of jump scares which are essentially the same jump scare used again and again, and then a last minute dash to save the day right in the nick of time. It's all very convenient and not in a way that makes me go, ah, well, it is a movie after all. Um, the the end of this movie is a CGI fest, which I'm not going to hate on it for. I like the imagery of, like, kind of levitating, you know, Jesus Christ poses. I think they're pretty cool in religious horror movies. The problem is that I've seen them done a lot and I don't necessarily think The Nun 2 does them in any exceptional way beyond it. Um, I think Bonnie Aaron's presence as a nun is basically akin to Art the Clown and Terrifier. It's stand and do a creepy smile and then stand and do a creepy smile and guess what? We're now going to pan the camera and when we pan back it was actually just a bush just a bush you were looking at. It wasn't the real character. And that gets a bit 
a bit crap after a while if I'm honest it's the same jump scare used over and over again in this movie it's a character looking at something and then something happens that makes the object they're looking at turn into the visage of the nun and then the nun bounces out for a scare and they're all shocked and then distracted or someone comes along and when they turn around you can kind of see the outline of the nun but it's maybe their eyes that are playing tricks on them they do that over and over again and it's it's pretty boring if I'm honest um, stuff I did like about this movie and I do have things I, I think uh, Tasia Firminga is great I think she's a great actress I think she's great in this um, I enjoy overall the, the the effects of the nun are really cool that like I say they're not groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination but they kind of hang together and they add a bit of grandeur yes they're overdone at the end of the movie but find me a horror movie that has CGI that doesn't overdo it at the end uh, those are few and far between for sure. There's an event in the school slash former church um, where there's a stained glass window which has like a black Philip goat uh, which, you know, there's a legend of the goat coming to life and coming to get you or whatever and the goat disappears from the stained glass window and then becomes Goat Boy. If anyone's ever seen any Bill Hicks, that's kind of what it reminded me of. But Goat Boy's pretty fucking terrifying. Like, it like runs... Um, not bipedally um, on the quads all the way right through chasing people in a snarly savage sort of way and it's so against what you're expecting to see in the movie it actually really works and those bits to me work a lot better than than other quote unquote scares from the nun in this movie I think the story kind of lets this one down and the ending lets it down even more and we'll swing back to that in a second to close up my thoughts before I give it a grade. Um, I think the story overall kind of feels like a hodgepodge of other things you've seen. To put things into perspective, this year has already seen a movie called The Pope's Exorcist, which is not a good movie but is hugely entertaining. Like, like I, I was smiling all the way right through it. And it has a very similar story to this, but because it's so over the top and like so tongue-in-cheek it kind of works because the movie's daring you not to take itself seriously whereas this movie is kind of daring you to take itself seriously and that kind of is is like a like a paper mache model being pissed on it you know starts to fall apart and loses all structural integrity as soon as the piss hits it um that's kind of where you're stuck with this one i think the cliche of the investigative we need to go to the papal records thing has been done to death and everyone seems to be a little bit too knowledgeable about stuff but no one's prepared to do any action on it which I also find a bit contrite and a, a cliche that has been done to death in horror movies as well. At the end of this movie ultimately see when I said <laughs> Insidious 5 commits the cardinal sin of putting you right back where you were at the end of the previous movie with no further movement this movie does the same uh, essentially you're led to believe that the nun is banished yet i know it isn't because i know that there's a haunted something out there that lorraine warren is going to come across in 20 years time from this movie so as soon as i know that this ending doesn't make a lick of sense and even the linking component of it back to the Conjuring movies in the final shot isn't really merited so now we're either going to have another nun movie which we do not need but this movie has already made quite a bit of money so we're probably going to get but either that or we're going to have another Conjuring movie which will somehow have a flashback that addresses how Valak gets to the new world and I couldn't give a tiny rat's ass about that at all um I kind of feel like the story's done. <laughs> kind of felt that at the end of The Nun, if I'm honest. Um, I don't think this is any better. I don't think it's any worse than the previous one. I probably like this one a smidge better. But there are elements that drag this down. And one of the big ones is the score for this movie. The sim track is bizarre. Um, it's quasi industrial kind of quasi symphonic and not in a way where either side is given enough 
of a push to mean much. And as a result, it became quite jarring when certain certain scores played in the back. I wasn't quite sure what we were doing. Um, I also am not entirely sure what the plan overall on this one, out with to make another Nun movie was. Like, I can't imagine this was uh, to continue answering, you know, questions of the fans and fill out the lore. Because this movie doesn't really do that. It ultimately, once again, ends up in exactly the same place the previous one does, with Maurice, a.k.a. Frenchie, trying to find a better life, and Sister Irene clinging to the fact that she is kind of saintly in her powers within the church. That's about it. The only character that really has an arc in this one is the American nun, who has the obvious arc that you would have seen Chekhov's doubting nun finds faith at the end of the movie. Who would have thought that? So yeah, overall this one didn't really do much for me at all. I gave the original nun movie a 3. I watched it again before going to see this again and I knocked it down to a 2.5. This one gets a 3 now. I think if I ever watch it again it would probably drop down to a 2.5. So on one viewing alone I can say very very loosely that I liked it and I give it a 3 out of 5, that's 6 out of 10 for those that pedantically like uh, reviews out of 10 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over this one, like, pretty much um, people that were in the theatre who obviously don't go and see a lot of horror movies, they seem genuinely scared by it, so it's doing its job, it's just not a movie for me, which to be honest I knew before I went through the door, so E3 out of 5 for The Nun 2 and that is your review of the movie. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of the podcast Under the Stairs. Now, if you're checking us out on YouTube, which you might be doing, please hit subscribe and that way you get all the content coming from this channel. Tons of videos coming in October. I think an episode every single day. So please hit subscribe and let me know what you made of The Nun too. If, however, you are checking us out on Spotify, either in audio or video format, that question will be there for you to answer as you listen to the episode as he prompt. If you're checking out the audio on any of the podcatchers out there, please hit subscribe to the feed here as well. That way you get access to the over 1,200 episodes in the podcast under the stairs back catalogue. But also, you will always get the brand new episodes as and when they drop as well. You can check out our website tputzcast.com for everything else I do and all the other feeds. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much for checking out this review. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and ladies and gentlemen I am signing off.